when the, we were asked to do this project, we had insider information in the right sense of the word. We, we knew already that all the supplies traditionally used for ventilators were wiped out. So then to do something in the, to fill that gap, which was predicted to be one million ventilators, we had to look for something outside the traditional ventilator supply chain. And that's when I sent Dave Lisdes to Home Depot to see what was equivalent that we could use. And he, when he was there, he picked some PVC. And then when he tried the PVC, it was airtight without PVC glue. So then we say, okay, I think we've, we've been very lucky. We got some, some material that is cheap, airtight, without glue. I built a ventilator when I was a graduate student at UF. So then it was not a matter of can we design a ventilator because that question was answered a long time ago. It was can we make it safe with non-ventilator parts. And so that's really our project. But now as it gained momentum, the larger companies are looking at us because they think from scalability and being outside the traditional supply chain, uh, it's, it's something attractive to them. So that's why now, yesterday, we put in a, a request for emergency use authorization. And to our surprise and delight, the FDA turned it around in four hours. We had an answer right before midnight when we submitted the application at, no, at 9 p.m. last night. So that was tremendously encouraging. It's a Farberware cooking pan that Gordon Gibby stole from his wife <laughs> and turned into a housing for the uh, Arduino. The Arduino is a microcontroller that sells for $20. It's essentially a computer. Uh, a group of software developers in Ottawa, Canada, India, and Gainesville are developing software for it. So this is the brains of the, of the ventilator, but it's only like $20, $25. Then it controls how and when the, those valves open. High pressure air from here, right, it's coming in. And then there is a pressure gauge, a pressure regulator, because the pressure is a bit too high for this to handle. So we reduce it, that's standard practice in, in medical devices. Then after it's reduced, it goes through the rainbow valve. The rainbow valve is opening, closing. Opening, closing, and the timing is based on this. And both are opening and closing at the same time because they're sharing the controller. Then from there, the gas goes through, a, there's an obstructor here. So basically, it's like a washer with a small hole so that we, we create a pressure that then goes this way and inflates a valve. Because if we push air to the lung, but this leg is open, all the air would just come right out. If it truly comes where this is needed, then the availability of ventilators will not be an issue. What is going to be the choke point? The people who know how to adjust this, right? The, the respiratory therapist. Respiratory therapist, very good, right? So that's going to be the choke point because we have one million ventilators ventilating one million patients. But respiratory therapists either are dying or getting sequestered and quarantined by, by the dozens or hundreds or thousands. Mm -hmm. So now you, you have a different problem. So you probably have heard of machine learning. Yes. So I'm discussing with a colleague who does machine learning. So then the idea is we will train a neural network to do the simple tasks that a respiratory therapist would do.